Alrighty traders, what is going on? Kyle Williams here. We are back. Uh, again, if you watched the end of my February recap, you know that uh, I mentioned I was either going to make this video early in the month, or, or I guess late February, like the last day, although I didn't. Um, so it, it's coming mid-March. Mid so um, and the reason for that is obviously I went to New York City to have and to host our third um, Clover Trading Bootcamp. It was a great, great time. Uh, it's been past a week now, but it, you probably can hear my voice. My voice is, or my throat and voice are still kind of lost. I'm still trying to get it back. Um, just because the bootcamp ended doesn't mean I stopped talking, did a bunch of webinars, all the good stuff. So it's just rolling, we're just slowly healing it back. Um, but nonetheless, we are not, or I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. We are going to review, you know, February's month here, even though we are in mid March. Um, and obviously, we'll talk about March after March, so ignore, ignore this first week or so of March. Um, we're here to talk about February. So $205,000, um, awesome, awesome month. I'm really happy about it in a lot of ways, shapes, and forms. Um, do I feel like I could have done better? Sure. There's always room for improvement, so I'm not going to beat myself down. In terms of how well I performed, I am pretty stoked about it. Of course, there's a few things that I could have done better to make the month better, but again, that comes with the territory. That comes with the everlasting and growing improvement. Um, in terms of what I came out with, with $235,000 is incredible. It's awesome. Uh, it is my biggest month in quite some time. Um, trying to go here. When was the last time I even came close to that? Um, I don't think I had a single month all of 2023 that was that big. Yeah, certainly not in the second half. There was nothing good there. Um, May of 2023 was 180. That was pretty high. Nothing in... Okay, no, January. So January of last year, so almost a full year or, or 13 months, so to speak, I had a $280,000 month. Um, so it's been some time. I've had, I, I actually did looked at, looked at the math or checked before this video. I have had eight months in my career over $200,000. So this is nothing new. This is nothing like groundbreaking. Um, but it is obviously been a training for almost eight years now. That's like what, 60 something months. Um, so to only have eight of them over 200,000 and this to be one of them is, is pretty good. We were given a lot of, a lot of opportunities, a lot of solid opportunities. Uh, and we'll go through, you know, almost all of them, um, that I can recall. So as always, let's jump by week by week. Um, let's just jump right in. Let me get my little sheet here um, or my Word doc that I write all the trades so we can make, stay in order, stay organized here. Um, the first trades, or I guess the sector, I should say, that clearly caused the month to start off hot was the low float China scammy tickers, right? Um, Holo running huge, starting it, you know, gapping up from, from, you know, like a dollar or two all the way up to four and then running all the way up to 17, 18 and actually went as high as like 50 and after hours. Um, originally I actually took a loss on this in the morning. This is on two dash seven. Um, took a loss on this shorting it out the open thinking It was going to crap itself. Um, ignore this white line. That's the previous close of, of Friday's close. Um, believe I remember shorting it somewhere in here. I'm actually think we had a good morning NASDAQ live trading session, um, during that time. And, uh, I remember shorting somewhere in here, taking a loss, getting squeezed, never touching it again until late day. Uh, and by late day, I mean, an after hours <laughs> technically, um, I got to the point where I probably should have taken it longer sooner, but the way things turned out, the way this squeezed, you know, right into the close massively remind me of a lot of TOP. Um, for those who don't know what TOP was, TOP was what last year. Yeah. April of 2023, um, ran again from, from single digits all the way up to in after hours up to like 240 or something insane. Um, again, I lost like a hundred grand that day. I got squeezed. You know, we're over, you know, coming up on a year later, I managed Holo way better. So instead of losing nearly six figures, I actually ended up making money on Holo on the day. So I had lost maybe a few grand shorting it. Um, but by, at, by the time after hours came, I had recognized and had seen this before. I'm like, this reminds me, this definitely reminds me of TOP. I almost got like PTSD, right? And, uh, and I realized, you know, I should probably be longing this thing. Um, and so that's exactly what I did. If we just go into the trades here, as you can see, we have a lot of trades to go through, but this is the first one. So like I said, took a loss here, shorting it in the morning, um, tried to scale in, try to get a position that was comfortable with finally ended up getting long right before the huge spike. Uh, you know, I longed it like 16, 17 before, you know, it minutes later, it's at the whole $10 or higher. Um, and at this point, you know, I'm th again, I'm thinking TOP went to two hundreds and I'm like, okay, well how high does Holo go? And so this, this to me, isn't really a setup right? There's no setup here. This is almost like I'm going long to prevent myself from going short. Um, and so I took the approach of like, you know, I don't necessarily care how much money I'm going to make from this. 
I'm just here for the ride. I'm just here to not short it. Um, and frankly, just see how high it goes, right? Just be involved. Um, obviously I was willing to lose money if it didn't go up. Right. But I'm like, you know, let's just, let's just see this. Let's just see how this plays out. Um, obviously I had a trade plan, you know, if it, if it went below, you know, this dip right here, if we go to the actual, you know, trades, if it actually went below, you know, 14 or 15 here on this little dip, um, obviously would have cut it there. But again, when you're up $10 here immediately, um, it's, it, it's a pretty easy trade from there. And so sold some into here. I think I sold like a hundred shares at a time. So sold some here, unfortunately got scared out a little bit, sold some there, but then it ripped and I sold another hundred shares at 50. And then once it started dying like this, I, I was at this point, you know, as we're entering, you know, the after hours close with little time left, you know, about an hour left, I pretty much came to the conclusion that, you know, we're not going to go to 200. We're not going to even probably go to hundred. And so I do, I did bail the rest of my shares, ultimately making a few grand more than what I lost. So I was up like three grand on the trade today. Um, again, nothing life-changing, nothing big for me. If anything, it's an average loss in terms of size of dollar, um, even though it's a win, right? An average win covers one loss, but, um, Nothing crazy. I'm just happy about the fact that I didn't get squeezed to living hell, right? This was not a top situation for me where I lost six figures. This is a full opposite and I actually made money. And again, I, I would contribute, you know, learning my lesson from top uh, because of that. So, but because this happened, this led to then a bunch of other opportunities, right? If you, if you traded this sector during that time, um, all the sympathies, all the other China runners that we've seen in the past, you know, few months to year came back. One of them being MLGO. Why? Because MLGO was the most recent to do it. MLGO, again, you know, back in December, went from the twos as high as, you know, 10, and the next day it's at 16, and then gave it all the way back down to two the next day. Insane volatility. So, of course, MLGO was the first sympathy to that, right? Um, on on when Holo was going nuts, um, MLGO, I don't think the dates are right, but ignored stock trade, it might be off. Um, you know, MLGO starts having a strong green day. And this is where I really screw it up, because if we go into that day, um, I, I, I mean, I, I missed out on a massive long trade, um, essentially. So was already up on the day, was uptrending as, you know, Holo was doing its thing. Unfortunately, I started trading MLGO too closely to how Holo was moving, right? I didn't have a big picture idea that this was a sympathy and this was going to eventually catch wind. It was like, I thought it should be catching wind exactly in the moment that Holo should be, which just wasn't the case, right? And so I'll show you what I did here. If you look at the trades, um, you know, got long into the close. Originally was right. It cracked, you know, for like a minute or two. It didn't even crack really. Like my risk was all the way down at, at, at 43, 44 down here. Why I chose to sell off or to sell it here, I think it's because Holo was dipping harder than I wanted to kind of idea. So I scared, because, like I said, because Holo was moving, I scared myself out of MLGO when really the move on MLGO was so minuscule and not meaningful at all that I, I, I really did not like how I traded this, right? And so then it actually held up, rebought it, um, pulled, held through this pull, spiked again, pulled again. And I'm like, why is it doing this? Why is it weaker than I want it to be? I want this to, you know, again, Holo's up massively now. We're up, you know, 10, 20, $30 or sure, higher in Holo on its way to 50. And I'm like, why hasn't MLGO gone yet? Like this should be over 70, 80, 90. Like this should be going. Um, and so ultimately I just came to the, the conclusion, like I can't, I just couldn't handle it. Right. For whatever reason, I wasn't too big of a size. I was only going to lose a couple grand at most if it went below, you know, 44, 43 here. I just didn't, I had the wrong expectations that this was going to follow holo immediately. Um, and I it was a huge mistake. Cause again, if we go into the next day, if we go into the next day, what happened, right? Go to the, to the eighth, uh, gapped up huge. Right. I mean, yeah, the, f the first part of pre-market was slow. It was around the 60s where it was in after hours. But right when, you know, 7 a.m. started, which is roughly when I got to the computer, I think I got to the computer around like 730 ish, maybe around here. Um, it was up massively. Like it was a whole 100 percent move. I bought in the 50s. It was it touched one. Um, and so for me, that would have been, you know, I had like a 25K position. It would it would have been. Um, a massive trade. I would have made like 20, 30 grand. So it really sucks because again, again I lost like two or, th or two or 300 bucks, chopped myself up and back and forth in after hours. Um, so to, to miss out on a huge gain like that is pretty frustrating. Not to mention if I even held and catch caught this morning spike. Now, granted, um, this next day, Holo did crash. Um, HK, HK, we'll talk about in a second, also crashed right out the open. So definitely wouldn't have held through this morning spike, but I least think I would have made it to one buck, uh, if not the high 80s or 90s. So again, we're talking, we're talking a healthy 20K on the table there. Um, really, really frustrating. 
really made me review and realize that like I need to just stick to the MLGO plan, not trade it so closely on Holo. Like trust that the fact that Holo is going up, the MLG will eventually follow. That's kind of what sympathies do. For some, whatever reason, I just felt like I needed to follow it right then and there, which is just not the case. Um, but I did end up shorting MLGO. So if we do go to the trades there, go to the actual non-e-trade long, or not long, but a short, um, did start in right in this first little red dip or this little, little carrot candle, right? If we go here, if we zoom in, um, I did think that might've been the top. Because again, at this time, HKIT is dying. A holo is dying. So the fact that MLG was spiking, I'm like, okay, this is a great opportunity to get into some strength before it actually crashes. Unfortunately, it was a little bit early, so I did cut that. Restarted in, um, thinking that $2 was going to be a magnet. So I was saving my full size around like 180, 190 to then risk two. Um, unfortunately, the high as it went was 170, and then it crashed, and it crashed so quickly, I totally missed adding. Um, I did not fill any trying to short here on this first halt down. Um, but then I add into the bounce, right? And so at this point now adding to the bounce, I can easily risk 170, kind of wide eye risk idea, but once this failed, then I moved my risk down to 130. Um, unfortunately, didn't add there either. I guess I technically added late day. Um, but honestly, I, I just kind of got, kind of got greedy. Uh, I thought with, again, Holo and HKIT dying so heavily, I thought MLGO could have at least seen sub 80, maybe even to the 70s on the day. And it just didn't, right? The low of the day was, what was this, like 70 or 80 something, like 84. And so here I was being maybe a little bit of greedy, maybe trying to be a little bit aggressive, never really getting it. So once it did bounce back to the 120s or 1-teens, I did short some more. But once we got into the close here, I just, for whatever reason, again, another mistake is like, I, I just, I, I knew deep down I should be swinging it. But for whatever reason, I just never mentally prepared for that going in. Like, I didn't think that was part of my trade plan. I thought, you know, it should have faded in the intraday. And so when we get there into the close, you know, we're closing over one. I just thought to myself, you know what? I, I should just be covering. Let me just lock it in, um, which sucks because I was up a way more under 90 cents here. Um, and so I kind of gave maybe roughly half my gain back covering it above one versus in the 80s. Um, it happens. You know, I still made like 5K, so it's nothing a big deal. But again, definitely would have been 10K had I had I timed it a little bit better. Um, not to mention had I swung it, you know, I think the next day it did touch like 70 cents, 40 cents or 60 cents. So like talk about even more money on the table had I actually stuck or trust in my gut what I originally thought, which is like, you know, this could be a swing instead of kind of backing out last minute. Um, you know, more money on the table. But again, that's kind of the theme you're going to find out about this month for me is that as opportunistic was as it was, uh, and as much money as I made, it was so opportunistic that I still left so much money on the table. And that, and kind of, that's what you want, right? You don't, you're never going to be perfect. Um, and the last thing you want is to really be only be given one opportunity and whether you nail it or, or, or screw it up is, de you know, determinant on how well your month goes. You want opportunities in months where there's so many that you can screw up like almost half of them or, or screw up on every single one of them and still make tons of money, right? That's kind of the, the gift of when we are in a very opportunistic market. And so that's kind of what happened um, on HKIT. So again, I screwed up MLGO royally on pretty much the long and somewhat of the short. MLGO though, or not MLGO, HKIT here, I actually traded this very well. Um, did not swing it either like MLGO. So again, more money left on the table. whoop de doo you know, theme of the theme of the month. Um, but I did trade this very well on this gap and crap day. Um, and again, the idea behind why I thought they were going to crap itself was one, Holo was crapping itself. But two, I've seen this before. And this happened again, to, to relate back to Top's example, when Top ran in 240, a bunch of other um, sympathies felt, uh, followed Top. But again, by the time they followed top, it was kind of too late. It's like everyone who missed top on the long side wanted to then chase all these low flow sympathies. And by the time they chased them, the run was kind of already over, right? It kind of, it's like a reverse psychology where whoever missed top, top ended up buying and chasing these ones that were already up. And by the time they're chasing these ones that are already up, they get back, they get backed, right? They take taking losses and the, the theme shifts from short getting squeeze on the, on the main play, which was holo and top to then actually making money on the sympathies that crap themselves, right? Um, so that's exactly what happened for me on HKIT. If we go into the chart there, um, go back there. Um, getting right out of the open, pretty much crap itself. Yeah, it had a little, it had a little spikes, a little, you know, two or three minutes of bouncing. Um, but again, this is while Holo was absolutely crapping itself and, you know, didn't take long for HKIT to do the same. And again, I, I also shorted it here. Um, tried it in pre-market, but did chop myself up a little bit. Um, obviously, in hindsight, had I just stuck to, you know, like the 750, maybe $8 level, a little bit higher, give it some cushion. Um, you know, this entry actually looks really good because it did it did fail right before market open. Uh, and then once it, you know, failed out the open and started panicking, I was full size right before it. 
Um, did add, actually, I shouldn't say full size because this was my last piece round now fully being comfortable risking the highs here. Um, wish I was a little more patient for maybe this entry, right? Um, but again, this was not most of my size. Most of my size was already taken here. Um, but yeah, downsize here, thinking it was going to actually give us a pop over view app once it didn't re added some back. Uh, and then I just started covering into small pieces throughout the way. Really, again, I was very good. The same way I thought MLGO should have faded to like, you know, below 80 and not into 70s. I stuck to that same plan on HKIT, thinking HKIT should probably see much lower than this first initial low. Um, now, it didn't do much lower, but it did, you know, I'm glad I got most of my covers below that new low a day. Um, so HKIT was the heaviest and biggest fader of the day of, 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 the, of the whole sector. So I'm happy about that. I did make, was it, 14K on this one. So this was a really good winner for, for a sympathy. Um, oh, whoops. I'm going back to here. So that was that again, but again, didn't swing. Um, and again, if you go to the next day, if we just kind of show you here on the ninth, um, went much lower, right? A whole dollar or so lower. Same thing with MLGO, 10 or 20% lower. Um, so one of those things where in hindsight, yes, I, you know, and not even hindsight in what, as was happening, I was like, you know, in my back of my head, like I said, I should be swinging these for whatever reason. I just didn't feel, um, or I did feel more risk adverse to that idea. Why I don't know. It just it just was. It just how it how it played out. And so again, um, could have made a little more money, but it's not a big deal. You know, I, I, again that this was the first week here. So between the first couple of days of or the middle of the week, you know, really came most of my gains. Um, the other really big trade that happened this week was on bets. Um, it is B E T S F now because it has gotten delisted. That's kind of, no, I didn't, I didn't think it was going to get listed, listed, but the reason why it got delisted was the reason why it got short. And that was because they had very, very toxic dilution. Um, uh, if you look back at their chart, um, it, it's just how they roll. <laughs> like, uh, it, it never was at $12,000 a share. It just constantly diluted itself, reverse split, diluted itself, reverse split. Um, I think they had like two or three reverse splits within the last year. Um, and so this was actually the first, what sub penny stock before they reverse split again, this was like below a penny. And then they reverse split, um, like a, a thousand to one or something crazy. And so it's ultimately, you know, you can't even see it, but this was the first day of the split. Obviously you see all this volume coming in here, but the next, the very first day it didn't have volume is because it went from sub penny to you know, seven or eight bucks here, um, started in on my short pretty much this very same day. Um, because I knew I had looked into, I'd done to my due diligence that they had some pretty dilutive and toxic dilution, um, to the idea that they were going to just rinse, repeat, they were going to do exactly what they did in the, pri the past prior two or three times. Like they just reverse split. They're going to dilute more. Um, and that's exactly what happened. So I get short. Um, I started just adding some, I took most of my size obviously on the first day, but then from there started adding like one or 200 shares a day, just kind of like a daily, you know, slowly scaling in and adding to the side, my position. Um, ultimately it gapped down, you know, on going into February because the NASDAQ had looked at them and said, Hey, your dilution is so toxic. Like we're going to delist you if you can't get it together. Right. Like the, your dilution is, is beyond the, the level of, of, of not fairness, but like even the, even the NASDAQ thought their dilution was overboard for, for whatever reason. Um, so they did, they did get gapped down. I did start covering most of my size into this move. Cause I was frankly just looking for, you know, two, the two to one range. I wasn't looking for the entire move. Um, just looking for one, you know, getting most of the move, right. From taking it from sevens down to, you know, two to one, I'm not going to try to squeeze water out of a rock for like sub sub dollar. Um, even now it's not still sub dollar and it, and it is delisted. So I think I made the right move there. But the ultimate reason why I ended up covering is because for whatever reason, when Holo and HKIT and NLGO were running, um, because bets is a, China company. It is based out of China. Um, and all these other companies are like China scam. Like they're also based out of China, but they're more just manipulated runners in my opinion, um, manipulated pumps, you know, for whatever reason, bets somehow got tied into that. Obviously not nearly to the extent that the others were, because again, it didn't even gap up that much, but because it was gapping up and started spiking in after hours, I did cover the rest. I was like, you know what? I don't need to risk that this goes back to like six, seven, eight. Right? I don't need to risk my entire gain or most of my gains if this does happen to have you know like an H kit like gap up or an MLGO like gap up. Um, that was in the back of my mind, so I did cover it all on that day. Um, if we go, let's get rid of this this little chart for now. Um, bets. Here's the little daily chart. You know, obviously the candle's different because this is showing after hours action, but I did cover. And again, I I'm happy I covered because I avoided a full dollar share spike. Um, but again, locked in like 20k on that swing. So really happy with that one. That was another awesome just cushion adding to that week. Um, so really happy about that one. Um, but again, 
never, re- I mean, I remember taking a loss, I think, on this day, trying to short it with with HK, with MLGO, never really amounting to much. It held up much better than the rest, ironically, um, which is a little bit odd. Um, gapped up this day because I think there was something about their, uh, they were trying to appeal their delisting. I'm not sure if they or if they said nothing to the listing and people thought they did. I, I didn't really look into it because I was kind of done with it at the time. But what do you know? A week later, we now have delisted. We're now at all-time lows, you know, sub two and uh, or a sub all-time lows of like 160, 170. And um, I, I won't be touching it again. You know, I got the I got the, the meat of the move I wanted. Um, it's just funny that now they're they hold the listing notice that started this gap down. It's right back to where it started. Uh, so just kind of funny. But uh, but that's how it went. You know, that's how it typically goes. So there's that. Um, going into week two, though, right? Week two. This is where the bulk of the majority of my stakes came mistakes came from. Uh, mainly these two days. Uh, first one being Holo. Okay, we go back to Holo. Um, if we go back to the daily, you know, it spiked. Or actually, let's go back into this day right here on the 8th. So again, after hours went up as high as 50. The next day, it, it gets up to 40 pre-market, but then it just gets it crushed. I mean, 50% haircut in the first 10 minutes of the day, right? From 40 down to 20. Um, or first 30 minutes of the day, I should say. Frankly, I thought, and I think everyone thought this, which is why it was a mistake, that this would be the next MLGO, right? Again, when MLGO went from two to, to 15 or 16 and then died back down to two in two days, I think a lot of people thought Holo would have the same potential and crashing back down to where it came from, uh, myself included. So um, there was a, a few times in here I was shorting, took a lot of my size, unfortunately, way too late. I should have been way more aggressive up here. Um, ultimately ended up taking like a loss um, somewhere in here. Um, definitely avoided most of this squeeze. However, I kept a very small, like 500 share position on with like a 24, 25 average, um, with the idea that I wanted to obviously swing it, but keep, keep my head in the game on it. And I don't even know if that's a legitimate reason to be short in the first place. Right. I just kind of have this thesis of like, you know, if they don't do it today, like they did with MLGO, they, they've kind of already made their move. They made it happen, so to speak. That was at least what I was thinking at the time, right? We'll find out that was not the case. Um, that once all these shorts are out and it's just left for them, the, the promoters, so to speak, to dump it, they're going to do that. Um, and so I thought this why, that's why I didn't cover this move. I pretty much was risking the highs, thinking that you know the last few shorts are having PTSD from the, the, prior, the, or the day prior, right? If we, get, we go back to the day prior, um, a lot of shorts had PTSD from this move right into the end of the day. And so that's exactly what I thought was happening here. And so I said, nope, unless it breaks highs, like I'm not cutting. Uh, I think this is going to you know, squeeze shorts out and the next day it's going to be right back down to where it came from, right? Somewhat true, right? Not fully true. Again, if we go to the next day, right? We go to the ninth. It did go back down to the 20s. So not back down to the all-time lows, but did go back down to the lows of the yes, of yeah, priors yesterday. Now, granted, it would have been better had I just actually entered, entered my short in the 30s and took it to 20. That would be giving me a much, a much better cushion. But again, I kind of already had my small size average in the mid-20s, so I didn't really feel comfortable adding and, and pushing that my, my luck there because it was strong and you know, I could have broken highs and would have taken a bigger loss. And so I was swinging it for a few days um, until, you know, if we go back to the daily, uh, it has this day, right? So swing it for one or two more days. And then all of you know, it has a bounce day. And again, what do you know? The high was 41.50 this day. And the high here was 43. So of course, it stopped me out. Okay. Um, again, if we go to that day on the 13th, really frustrating, right? To have small size, um, to try to be patient, but still they, they just managed to bring it back and stop you out and then still kill it. Right. It was one of those things where it's like, had I not had a swing on, had I not had a small position, again, I probably could have shorted those 30s in the first day, risking the highs, getting a pullback to 20, and then cover those and then do it again. Like in multiple days, they gave you multiple chances to kind of play the range. But because I was so fixated on having this one little small starter of a swing idea, you know, ruined it all. Right. It, it didn't allow me to have the right, correct picture. And so unfortunately, when it came back and stopped me out, um, I just got tilted right? You can see me covering there, realizing that they're breaking it over the thirties. It's only a matter of time to go to the 40. Um, and what do you know, again, I'm all thinking back to the first day it ran when it went to 50 and after hours of like, okay, if they're going to bring this back, like this might be the time they're really going to screw people and take it to a hundred, right? Um, or take it higher than people expect. So what do you know? I start longing, uh, <laughs> start longing, uh, selling it, longing again, selling it again, 
Then I tried shorting, or then I, I think this is the last bit of long. Then I, of course, terrible timing, and I'm tilted at this point, right? I'm trying to short the lows, thinking, okay, now they're gonna kill it. That was dead wrong. Tried buying it again, then I sell it again. So like three or four times, I'm just buying, selling, buying, selling, shorting, covering, shorting, covering. Um, ultimately leading to doubling my loss, right? This, this initial swing cover from maybe some of the loss I took um, shorting it too low on the first day, like I said, um, lost like 15K. You know, it happened, no big deal. The problem is all of these then doubled it. So I lost 30K on this ticker alone that day. Um, really, really frustrating because again, it just, it just, you know, again, I thought I avoided the, um, what's it called, the top scenario, right? Losing six figures like last year, doing really well on that first day of Holo, only actually making money. So to then lose that discipline, lose that control over, over how I was handling it and losing 30K on this day um, was pretty frustrating. It sucked, you know, obviously still way better than, than top, right? Top was three times the size of my holo here, um, but it is what it is. You know, it happened and it sucks, but it, you know, it wasn't devastating. Um, what was what what was frustrating is that, um, to add insult to injury, is that, you know, they brought it back down to the 20s, held it up for a little bit more, and then made the move to 100. And did I play this long this day? Um, not until it went well after 100, right? If we just quickly go into here, on the 16th, um, you know, missed this entire move, right? Missed this whole thing. I tried longing it in here, thinking they were gonna ramp it again, only to then take like a break even to small loss in after hours, <laughs> you know? So traded this pretty poorly, pretty terribly. Um, not to mention the fact that I ended up do, I did, I did end up getting reshort um, somewhere in here, like after it died on this day, started getting short and swinging into here, and then I ultimately gave all my gains back on this bounce day back here, chopping it up again. Um, so again, terrible trader for me. Um, definitely no way, shape or form helped my bottom line to the end of the month. If anything, again, I'm still down 30 grand or whatever it is um, from the mainly all on this day. So it sucks, but it is what it is. You know, I'm just thankful that it brought sympathies that did make me money. Um, so there's that. I, I had that going for me. Um, now, in terms of this day on the 14th, um, I didn't even have the chart up. It was BMR. BMR sucked. And if you were on either Wine Wednesday or Good Morning NASDAQ, um, we'll look close some charts here. We'll uh, let's get rid of uh, we'll get rid of MLGO. Um, BMR traded it really poorly, and I hate how I traded it because I kind of knew how it would end. I just didn't have the correct trade plan to stick through it. Um, and essentially, what happened is between this day into this day, um, I was shorting it for their offering come the 15th, right? They literally put in their PR, like we are offering at $10 a share, I think it was, uh, and the offering will go into effect on the 15th. So the fact that it was hanging around in the 16, 17, 18 area, I was like, just survive until the 15th and you're gonna get a gap down to, to $10, right? And that's exactly what it did. Now, why I couldn't create a good trade plan around it to stick to that, I, I don't know. I'm still frustrated with it because again, it's one of those things where I was right, but I just kept chopping myself on these two days. Like if we specifically go into the 14th, the day before, um, you know, I lost like three or four times on it, um, trying to be fancy with it. I think, I think because I knew the offering was coming or the offering already came and just a matter of, can you survive there? I felt overly convicted. So I took this larger size than I should have. And so any pop back against me made me feel very uncomfortable. So, you know, for example, I was already short, I think pre-market or if not overnight from the previous day. And so when it spiked back over 18 and 19, I said, nope, this this is weird. Like, why is it spiking? I covered, okay? It dies. I don't reshort till like 17 or, or even below 17 in the 1650s. Uh, I remember this popping up over, you know, these highs now back over 17. I said, why is it popping over 17? Cut it. Silly, stupid cut. It, it barely went a few cents over 17, you know, pointless. Then I remember shorting like into this crack. I remember shorting into these pops, into this balance is saying, okay, you know, it was a huge line of support at 16. It's now a huge resistance all, all afternoon. You know, let's hope this doesn't, let's hold it under 16. I swing it overnight. We cover at 10. What do you know, late day, it breaks back over 16 and then it breaks up, backs over 17 again, very similar to this pop. What do you know? I literally, I'm literally covering like this candle. Okay. So you can hear it in my, my voice probably or my, my attitude here of the frustration of just how, how dumb it was of, of, of just putting these such tight stops to this ticker that just didn't, these, this price action didn't mean anything. Um, such, such minuscule, uh, meaningless price action in the short term. Because again, you, again, you go to the next day, the 15th, huge gap down, major flush to 10, to nine really. 
So I lost like 10K between all those tries. I gave, I gave each try like two or 3K each. Lost every single time, obviously. Had I just had a better plan with maybe smaller size, I would have honestly, one, I would have avoided taking so many paper cuts on the previous day, but then actually would have been here for this move and probably would have made 10K on the flip side. So it was a full 180. Instead of losing 10K, I could have made 10K. So that's what led to, you know, these two days, Holo and BMR. Really sucked, but obviously these two days made up for it to get the weak green, and that was because of SMCI. Um, I won't go into too detail of SMCI, frankly, because I already have a video out on the Clover Trading YouTube channel. Actually, I will link... Um, It'll either pop up on the screen here or go to the description. It'll be a link to, the, to that video. I go in detail, um, you know, on that trade. Essentially, I made over 70, what was it, 76, 78 grand that day. Um, just beautiful, beautiful red day. I mean, this is like a once in, once a year, twice a year kind of red day. Um, and even I, then, I didn't even play it. I played it well, but I, I honestly didn't even take the majority of the move. I was all covered by like 890s. And it went as low as 800. So like, you know, uh, I don't want to do the math, but it could have easily been a very healthy six-figure day. Um, so I won't go too into detail, but I will just share the chart with you guys so you guys see what it was. Um, in terms of what I didn't share, well, this is the first This is the first red day, right? So yeah, beautiful scaling in, waiting for it to go red for a full size, and then covering into the dips, and then never reshorted for the move lower, right? So I talk all about that in the video. Go check that one out. Um, the one area I did not talk about in that video was that on the way up, I actually chopped myself up pretty, I wouldn't say badly, because I actually lost very few. Um, but I remember, you know, like here, I'm like shorting it, covering it, shorting, covering it. Um, eventually, I don't remember if I longed it the next day or the day prior, eventually, or even the, the day before. Um, eventually, I actually ended up coming out break even on the days leading up to the first red day on SMCI. Um, frankly, because I, you know, when I was getting chopped up on it, right, on uh, mainly like this day and to this day, I finally just let go of the idea of shorting it too early and said, like, get long, like, go long, right, <laughs> stop fighting the trend and just, just, just join it, um, and so I remember actually making some money back, I remember losing like 13k on like fighting it short, but then made like 9k or so back longing it, um, so I was down very little, only like three or four grand um, leading into this day, which allowed me to not be so exhausted and be prepared to push size, which is what I did, I mean, actually, I talked about this trade in very good detail at the uh, New York City boot camp as well, even even beyond um, what I did in the YouTube video. So people who are at the New York New York boot camp, you know exactly what I'm talking about. How just in depth we talked about this trade. Um, but yeah, huge huge winner, right? Like that that was you know almost half my month just on this day alone. So that was really really cool. Um, so yeah, go check out that video. Go watch that. In terms of what happened after that, I did actually make K, 8K on the second red day here on the 20th. Um, it, this again also went lower than I expected. If we go into it, um, you know, right out of the open, super, super weak. And so if we actually look at my trade. Um, yeah, second red day here, right? Short out the open, noticing after it failed to, to pop the red green right there, um, you know, failed or held under, I should say, sold off, took the first initial move for, you know, whatever, 10, 20, 30 bucks a share, uh, made eight, eight K, you know, never re talk, think, thought about reshoring the balance. When you know, it actually went down to 700. So quite the downside move that this had. Again, I don't even want to do the math had I had my size from <laughs> from the first ready all the way down to 700. Again, I don't have a crystal ball. Had I known it was going to 700, of course I would have held. But again, that's not how trading works. Um, and frankly, I was just I was just worried a rebound was going to come. Like I covered it all here because the last thing I would want would be a, for a strong rebound to happen given it's already sold off like 200 plus dollars a share. Um, and of course, that just didn't happen until late day, right? The actual bounce came late day here. Um, and so I was already well out before that. So I am happy with how I took it. Just took the, the very quick morning move and then and walked. Um, so that was nice. Now, in terms of the rest of the, uh, that next week, really weird ticker here, ARRNF. Um, I honestly consider this a type of pump. I just don't know what type of pump I would consider it under. Uh, maybe it's not one at all, but like it just gave me massive vibes of, um, for those who are around last year, HCNWF. So HCNWF, really quickly, right, um, was, a, again, I'll say a foreign ticker, very similar to AR, ARRNF. Um, and the pump, when it pumped started, I mean, massive volume, right? For OTC, uh, you know, when you get 10, 20, 12, 10 million plus shares a day, that's a lot for OTCs nowadays, unfortunately. I'm sad to say, but it's the truth. And so from the beginning, this was just very strong, very liquid, um, very controlled. And what do you know? It ran, it runs from, you know, 50 cents to nearly $5 in, in five days, right? And so when I saw, 
And so in this, this type of stock, if you were watching it back then had this very distinct price action, um, so similar that I, I immediately saw it and, and felt that same action with ARR and F here. Um, now it did have its move obviously from 10 cents to 35, but when it pulled back and started basing again, uh, I did pick up some, some long, uh, and I actually was able to catch this move and then ultimately I ended up selling it on this day when it started wicking. Um, frankly, I thought what have happened, I, I thought I could just have a huge move over, over the highs, but it just didn't. Um, thankfully I actually timed this very well. It was just luck that I sold this day, mainly because it was just too weak. I was looking for another strong grade day because the next day, I think they announced some bad news or an offering. So it did gap down. It would have given back, you know, pretty much all my gains. Um, but I made like, what did I make? I made like six K on that. So pretty, so one of those, I just mentioned it because it was still one of those weird, again, not really a setup. You know, I'm kind of at this stage where I will only, you know, I, I used to preach all the time, you know, only trade a setup if you have a setup, which again, I still think is true in many ways, shapes and forms. But me being eight years in, I've seen enough and felt enough and traded enough where there are very unique instances where I am like, you know what, I'm willing to give a small risk to see how this plays out. Um, but again, I say that with a disclaimer of like, if you're even one, two, three years in, that's probably not what's going to find, make fine profitability for you. I would suggest sticking to actual setups. Like that's what, at least what I did. You know, I can only speak from personal experience, but, um, there is times now where I, I kind of get a feel for tickers, um, and they turn out right. You know, this, this is what happens when you trade, when you're taking thousands of trades over eight years. So, um, it was cool. You know, it was, it was, it was one of those things that just worked out. Um, so yeah, I made six K there. Uh, the next trade, this is the, I mean, this is nothing new here. This is this is my old little bread and butter. The farms of these never really happen anymore. Not to say never, but very rarely happen. Um, again, again, maybe we get a couple a year. Um, for those who even know what I'm talking about, go. I mean, if you want to go back that far, literally go to my YouTube channel, scroll all the way down to the very first video I've ever made. I did talk about this exact setup again back in 2019 when I made that video. It happened much more frequently. It happened like once a month. Now these only happen like again like two or three times a year, maybe. Um, but yeah, this is your classic old school OTC Wolf of Wall Street pump and dump, right? Um, you know, had its first move or its first wave or, or pump here from 50 cents to two bucks, died, then brought in a lot more volume. The second round, again, went from a dollar to 225, died, came back one more time, and then it actually got the CE, which again, I talk about in that video, in the very first YouTube video, so go check that out. Again, I can put like a link in the description below um, if you guys want to watch that, but yeah. Um, you know, got the CE, the cow at emptor, and then died. I covered the rest at like 60 cents on this day. If we go to that chart here. Yeah. Um, you know, that's me covering my little green candle there. That is definitely not me buying. <laughs> Otherwise I'd be down 80%, but, uh, already, but yeah. So I made like 20 something grand on that one. So I get another awesome opportunity. And that's kind of what I've found to be the case when I have good months, which is obviously I'll have months like February where there's, there's one huge winner like SMCI, but I, I found there's a common trend in a lot of months that just have a lot of good opportunities. I will typically have a really good month if I'm, if I'm given, you know, a small handful of trades that can result to five figures, right? If I can just have a, a you know, five to 10 trades where I can make 10 to 20 K like a hundred, a hundred K month or 200 K month is very doable for me at this stage of my career. Um, and so that's what February was, right? Obviously SMCI was a huge portion, like I said, but even without SMCI, if we just delete this, right, we're still about 130. You know, yeah, we'd have been red this week because of because of you know Holo and, and BMR, but uh, that's where some of my best months come. Where even beyond just one big trade, there's still a lot of awesome solid opportunities. Where a lot of these days throughout the month, I'm still making five figures in a day, right? Um, so, anyways, getting sidetracked. But let's move on. So the next thing, the sector, and this was the last sector to kind of close out the month, um, was the AI theme, right? So as SMCI is going nuts, you know, Nvidia is going nuts, the AI chip sector is going nuts, then so obviously trickles down to the small cap AI space. So SOUN massive, I mean, obviously initially gapped up because news came out that Nvidia owns shares of SOUN. They don't and they don't own very much. In fact, they only own shares of SUN from an offering like back in 2017. So really not meaningful at all, in my opinion. You know, the cynical short seller mini was like, this is dumb. You know, this is not a reason to, to, to for this to be up, but it doesn't matter what I think, right? The reality is the market caught wind of this because it was now related to the hottest stock in the market, which was Nvidia. And so it took some time, it took about five or six days to consolidate, but eventually, you know, off to the races it went, right? Massive, massive daily candle from four all the way up to like 550. Um, I did not take part in this long. I did take a small short in it, but I mean, I mean, it like made like 400 bucks, nothing crazy. Um, you know, missed the breakout, which was the main move. Of course, now the next day, this is where um, things got fun. And, and I ended up making a lot of money on this. So 
let me go in here. What day is this? The 27th. 27th. Here we go. Um, here. So gapped up huge. Um, and it was such a big gap up that it reminded me of NKLA. I know we're, I know we're referring to a lot of tickers today from the past, but again, I, that's, that's kind of how, you know, along with setups that I already trade, you know, if I can, if I can familiarize myself with former setups in the past that did the same thing, it makes it that much more convicted of a trade that I want to take. So, um, very similar NKLA, right? Kind of consolidating, going nowhere. All of a sudden, boom, massive green candle, right? Breakout, all the good stuff. Um, next day gaps up huge. And because it gapped up so huge after such a huge day run, it's so much harder for tickers to continue a day two. You know, some do, don't get me wrong, but a lot of them typically don't. Um, and so when I remember this dying on NKLA, I actually did not make much money at all on this day, unfortunately, because I was just not prepared that it was going to die like this. Um, it quickly reminded me that like if SOUN gaps up too much today after already having a huge green the day prior, you know, I want to get short. Um, and so I ended up getting short in out the open here when it had this lower high here at that, you know, in the sevens, low sevens. I remember either covering very small or none at all and then having it come back. So I did cut myself, I took a small loss on this bounce back. But when it finally spiked into eight, I'm thinking, okay, um, this is still an overdone move. The gap up is still big. The, the thesis is still there. It's just how am I going to manage and time this? Um, and so what I did was I started shorting in the, the 770s, thinking $8 should probably be a nice round number to fail under, right? So I kind of went in risking eight bucks. Um, and then it did. It did fail nicely. And I remember adding on the backside eventually, um, you know, letting this chop around, not doing anything. And then when it cracked here, I thought to myself, okay, this is likely going to break, right? This is, this is now going to break, you know, 650. We're going to fade off to like, you know, not red green, but we're going to go to, you know, maybe six and I'm going to cover for the rest of the day. It's going to bounce, going to chop around, do whatever. And then tomorrow I'll short for a first red day. That was the thinking. Unfortunately, and this happened live in our trading webinar uh, in with the, with the Four Leaf Clovers. I was doing a webinar here where I, I told them I was like super comfortable now. Like the, the, the odds that this double bottoms is so small. I was acting all confident, right? Um, and ironically, it just bought, perfectly double bottomed, perfectly held, never went lower the rest of the day, as you can see. And then I proceeded to just give gains back, unfortunately. Um, ended up covering it here, tried reshorting it, you know, after it's, you know, call it like this little triple top or lower highs. Did fail. But then covered again on this move and after hours, I thought, oh my gosh, they're squeezing it back. Like I, I this is not what I intended um, for a swing overnight. And so I made 13K on this move, taking it from here and then covering it there and then gave 9K back in after hours, covering it over, over, you know, this new little high here it made, which is silly because again, that was the highest it saw ever again. Um, so frustrating, made 4K today um, on this one. Um, but the, the, I wouldn't go back though and change anything right? Uh, that's the weird part where it's like, okay, yeah, I was up like 20K up right here in the 650s and only made 13K when I covered it back over seven. But the reality is nine times out of 10, tickers are going to break down like that. Um, so I don't regret not covering it like that. Maybe I just wish I would have maybe reacted a little bit better knowing, you know, after this push, but then bouncing back and holding again, like making a higher, a higher low, then I should have probably reacted and been like, okay, you need to, you know, downsize or take some off. Um, Cause I think we have the trades there. Um, oh yeah, BBAI. We'll go about that one next. Um, but SOUN, right? Um, right, shorted, covered a little bit, cut that loss, tried again, cut that loss, finally got the full size I wanted, covered a little bit before the double bottom, but then didn't cover the rest until here, right? Took my, took my 13K gain, you know, could have been a 20 gain gain, whoop de doo again, nine times out of 10, I won't be covering it all here. I just won't. Like, they, they usually break down like that. Um, and then here's the overnight idea where then after I cut it and it failed pretty hard, I said, okay, let's reshort, try to add some more, was willing to swing cause it closed pretty weak, but unfortunately in after hours, it creeped back and then started breaking over the highs, at least the late day highs. And so I cut it again. This is the trade I do re regret. Um, but granted, I, I just should have been smaller size then or risking this high. Um, frankly, at the end of the day, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't move my risk with the size I had to here. Maybe I should have just downsized to then be able to risk here. But again, either way, I'm still risking more than I wanted to. I'm um, just thinking it should have never gotten back over here. So it did, when it did that after hours, I just was, it was frustrating. Um, it, it was annoying. It was not what I expected. Um, but obviously then the next day, right, that's when it finally died. Um, right, got a 720 again, faded, did nothing but fade till pre-market, um, was red on the day, or was gapping down, um, gave, a, gave me one good pop, which is actually where I filled my size. And actually this was live, I believe. 
uh, we did this on Good Morning Nasdaq on, on our YouTube. So um, panicked really hard. And then I remember covering the rest sub six. And then what do you know, that was the low for the day. Um, made like 22K on this day. So all in all, did make like 25K plus from SOUN. Maybe if I trade it better, it should have been like 30K plus, maybe 40. Um, but again, theme, it just, I'm given good opportunities and I still screw them up. But again, they're such good opportunities. You still make money. Um, we look at that there. Yeah, here it is, right? Um, got short, got full size in that pop, thankfully. Uh, great panics, great covers. Started rescaling in short on this bounce. Cover the rest. Tried one more time thinking we'd, we'd break down because there was this really nice kind of like support line. If it just broke, it would have probably gone back down to the six or low sixes. Um, obviously didn't happen. So gave back like 2K, like a small loss. Um, but again, made 22K on the day on this one. So that was really fun. That was really cool. Uh, the only other trade that was part of this sympathy was BBAA or BBAI. When SOUN was breaking out over four going to 550 on that first day, BBAI was breaking out over this, you know, 235 right? And I actually made the same mistake that I did with MLGO, right? So if we go back to SOUN real quickly, right? Let's go to like a, we probably could fill, it probably can be seen here, right? If we go to one month, or I might've broken it here. Let's see. Yeah. So when SOUN broke out huge here, it actually cracked because they, there was filings put out that, you know, insiders were selling shares or selling portion of their shares. So it cracked. Well, BBAI, I was long, you know, for the breakout, for the sympathy of SOUN. And when that news came out for SOUN, I sold my BBAI because I was like, oh, that's not good. Like, I don't want, I don't, I don't like that right down here. All right. I, I got long in the like 230s area because I think the breakout was 235, right? So in the 230s on the move way, on the move, or on the way up in that move. And so when SOUN cracked, you know, BBAI cracked very small. I mean, a few pennies, but the point was, is like, oh, that, I don't like that. I, I sold, I, 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 you know, exited my position. But then by the time after hours came and SOUN actually recovered right back to where it was with like nothing had changed, I thought to myself, this might still gap up. And if it does, BBI is going with it. And so the last thing I want to do is repeat my mistake with MLGO just a couple weeks prior. So I actually did rebuy. Um, I rebought into the close here as it started uptrend into the 250s. And what do you know, the next day, it gapped up to 270. Now, I wouldn't say a mistake here, but but out the open, I was so focused now on trading SOUN that for, for in the same reason that I also then couldn't focus as much on BBAI. So I did end up selling it all of it right out the open at 270 to focus on SUN. Um, and again, especially because SUN's dying, I, I, I definitely thought BBI would die being, being a sympathy. Um, unfortunately, it actually continued much higher. It actually held up well, well, you know, way, way, way better than SOUN. Um, you know, af after SOUN cracked, you know, BBI, you know, grinded higher, um, actually gapped up again. So one of those things where I made 9K on this overnight long, but had I had a little bit different of a plan, maybe it was able to put, give a little more focus. Um, certainly wouldn't have made it to, to 325, but I definitely had three in mind. I thought three was doable, right? So again, another, you know, you're always gonna leave money on the table. I'm just thankful and should, and everyone should just be thankful. Like if you're in a gift for giving market, like that's what it gives you is still money after screwing it up. Right. Um, so that's how it goes. The only other trade that I'll mention that kind of resulted in this last bad day, um, was kind of starting to be a degen, um, AULT. So AULT is like a, uh, I think they're a Bitcoin miner. And as you know, for involved in crypto has been insanely hot. Um, you know, we haven't even talked about that because I haven't really placed any more closed trades on on on, on crypto related uh, actual cryptos. Uh, I've just been staying long. Um, unfortunately, you know, I talked about my selling my GBTC or most of it anyway, um, or all the GBTC style plays back in January. Obviously, that was uh, you know in hindsight a mistake. At the time, I, I felt pretty good about it because I thought this would consolidate for at least a couple months to like get back in if I wanted to. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. This thing just ripped its face off, right? Um, but again, it's no boohoo, poor me. Like, again, I still have actual enough exposure to Bitcoin itself. Um, it's incredible how it's literally broke highs on, on Friday, which is insane. But again, it's, I also expected this. I just didn't expect it to happen this early on. I thought we were going to maybe do it in like the next 10 to 12 months, not, <laughs> not the next two months. Um, but anyway, with Bitcoin going hot, I thought to myself, after AULT gapped up huge on this day on like crypto related revenue news, and it was back down. I thought to myself, this might just regain its 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 basing and kind of try again. Um, 
very speculative and unfortunately just did not work at all. I ended up selling the next day down on this red day for like a 5k loss. A um, little bit oversized, too big in my opinion um, for a setup that just hadn't proved it, prove, or not even a setup, an idea that hadn't proved itself yet. Um, so that did result, you know, add to the last day. But again, either way, end of the month, 205 grand. Um, March has so far has not been as great of a start. We're practically break even, right? We're up 2k. Um, it's not even a full loss for me. So that's that guys. Um, this is a long one, but again, I'm just very happy with the month. You know, we're already up, you know, 360,000 at dollars after borrow fees, call it give or take. Uh, I am closing in on $5 million in profits. I'm like just under there. Um, but I oddly haven't even been really, I mean, I've obviously been counting, right? But it's not like I, it's not like this week was tough because I was like just underneath it and I'm like, oh, I'm fighting it because I know a lot of people deal with that when it comes to like PDT or being after some milestone. Um, ironically, I, I knew I was under it, but I, every morning I kind of completely forgot about it. And then at the end of the day, I checked like how I crossed it and I was like, oh, nope. And then every day, oh, nope and nope. <laughs> so it's just one of those things where I haven't been really looking that closely until the day is over, but I just haven't got there. But again, it's not a big deal. It's just a psychological you know, number in everyone's brain. Um, it will happen. Uh, I, I do feel better about the rest of March. I do think opportunity is still there. Just, you know, nothing really kind of played out as well as I would have liked in, in this week. But again, we'll talk all about that next week or next month. I should say when it's over. Um, but anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. I know these are long videos, but I know a lot of you guys enjoy them. I'm going to go rest my voice because I already feel it being lost again. Um, but anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will check you guys out in the next video. Peace.